What is up, YouTube? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Backflip Battles. Today, we are using the Mega Glalie team once again with Mega Glalie, the Tapu Bulu, Magnazone, Lana's Fane, Milotic, and Incineroar. Let's get started and play some games. So, if you haven't seen the previous episodes with this team, highly recommend go checking them out. It is actually pretty early in the morning that I'm recording right now, so my energy level might not be as high. But hopefully we can still have a good episode and hopefully Mega Glalie can still put in some more work for today. Otherwise, the rest of the team has been doing pretty well. The special landers on with Tapu Bulu, even though it's a giveaway, has still been doing a good amount of work. Magnazone has been pretty incredible, actually. Magnazone has done a lot more work than I originally anticipated, especially helping trap those steel types, which my Tapu Bulu and my... Um, Glalie do not like, so that's really useful. Being able to trap Pokemon like Celesteela or Aegislash. Well, actually, I think Aegislash actually escapes from Magnapole because it's a ghost type. But being able to trap the Steel types like Kartana, for instance, so my Incineroar can knock it out is pretty sweet. But it's taking quite a while to find our first game, so I think we'll be right back with the first game. We'll just cut it out till we find one. We'll be right back with the first game of today's episode. Okay, we got a 1563 rated player from Japan as our first opponent of the day. Bring the team of, wow, triple starter, Blastoise, Togemaru, Rebombi, uh, Landis, Farian, Charizard, and Decidueye. Hmm, I feel like you're dual Mega on this team. Because I think you have Blastoise as a Mega with Rebombi and Togemaru support. And I think Charizard would also be a Mega here too. Hmm. Really interesting. Um, what do I want to go here? I think I want to go Magnazone plus. I know my Lodic's a good lead. I think my Lodic could be a good lead. Not exactly sure. Maybe just. Um, maybe I lead Bulu. I don't know. If I lead Bulu Magnuson, I'm really weak to the Charizard lead. But, yeah, I don't see Glalie doing too much work here. It does have Freeze Drive, but I feel like my other Pokemon are better in this instance. I think my Lodic and Incineroar are in the back, because having my Lodic as a switch into a bunch of my opponent's options is great. And, yeah, I don't really like my Landers in this matchup, other than having the Scarf Stone Edge option. And that Intimidate is nice, but I don't feel like I'll absolutely need it in this game. I can't really tell what my opponent's sets are immediately. I feel like, yes, Freeze Drive could have been useful, yet it'd be really hard to get off because I feel like this is a Tailwind support team. And I, since I don't have, like, my opposing t like, I don't have Tailwind on my side, I can't counteract that. So, Blastoise to see you are going to lead. This might be Pledge. Yeah, this might be Pledge. And I boosted the power of my opponent's pledge. Uh, yeah, not great here. Hmm. Maybe it's fake out Z Tailwind. I can't really tell what my opponent has as options. I could double the blast, so I'm risking a protect though. I don't feel like my opponent can knock out Bulu immediately. I think I'll substitute if my opponent goes for a fake out play and horn leech the Blastoise. I feel like that covers a lot of options. It looks like it will be Mega Blastoise here. Yep. So no Charizard. Unless it's regular Charizard for some reason. Which is actually really solid for me. Because Charizard is probably the scariest Mega Evolution from my opponent's team, in my opinion. We're going to see straight for the Water Spout. Not even fake out. No, nothing. That does a lot to my Magnezone. Although I think I'm still in substitute range. We're going to see the, ooh, the City Z move. Yeah, so we're actually going to see, uh, what's the, Sinister Arrow Raid. Okay, I knew it was Arrow Raid, but I couldn't remember the first word. Okay, Magnazone? No, Bulu. I might survive this, actually. Oh, yeah, Bulu tanking that. Okay, sweet. Where did the rest of the Pokemon go? <laughs> Where did the Pokemon go? Is that supposed to happen? Hornleech going to come out into the Blastoise. Finish off the Blastoise. Great. And I think I get a free substitute up. That's definitely worth, instead of going for a Zemu to knock out the Blastoise. Uh, substitute. Yep, I had 3 HP. Sweet. 
And the Spirit Shackle go through Substitute? I don't think it does. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'm pretty sure that's only uh, Marshadow's move. Let's see what my opponent's going to do here. Landra's going to come out. Okay. So I do have a Bula at full health. I don't know what kind of Landris this is. I might just want to protect a scout what kind of Landris that this is. The only way I get punished is if it's a Sword Stance variant. Because I don't know if it's Sludge Bomb or not. Because I feel like if it is a Sludge Bomb variant, that's the reason why you sent it out. Or I could just go Incineroar since you're not going to go for a Ground type. Actually, no. I do like the Incineroar play. I... I would like to get rid of City Y before I can get in my Milotic because I think Milotic can clean up this game pretty nicely, be, unless it's Token Mar in the back. We'll get, go in Sonora here. We'll find out what kind of landers my opponent is, if it's physical or special. And we'll just protect Magnezone just in case because uh, I don't want to lose Magnezone just yet. Let's see. It's going to be a Sludge Bomb. It is special landers. Okay, we do confirm that. We don't know if it's Scarf or not, though. Uh, gets a critical hit and a poison. Not exactly fun there. And Spirit Shackle going to come out targeting my Magnuson. Okay. Um, poison's a bit annoying. Usually they run either Assault Vest or Scarf. I think it would be Scarf on this team. Just in case uh, Tapu Koko gets out of hand. So I think what I'm going to do, go for the Flash Cannon into Landis and Flare Blitz. If Togemaru is that last Pokemon, I do trap in the Togemaru. But this, again, we're banking on if this is Scarf Landis or not. It is switching out, so I'm assuming it's Scarf. Going to be the Togemaru coming out. So that Pokemon is now trapped in. So that's pretty nice for me. Let's see what the switch out is. Air Balloon. Okay. Spirit Shackle once again. This is minus one, so I don't know if this is going to break the sub. That is definitely going on the thumbnail. Yeah, it doesn't even break. So Flare Blitz going to go out into the City I should be able to knock out since it was Emu to City Y. Yeah, perfect. And then I break this Totemaru Sash here. And I don't know. I think the poison should proc my berry. I think the poison should proc my berry. It's Flash Cannon going to go out into Totemaru. Do a bit of damage. Pop that air balloon. And now it's going to be an interesting question because... Okay, Landis is going to come in. It's probably Scarf. What's my counterplay? Do I save Incineroar? Because Incineroar could be useful for the Intimidate. I wonder what you have to lock yourself into if you're my opponent. Probably Earth Power. You probably go for Earth Power. Um, the question is into who? Are you going to fake out Incineroar and just go for the Earth Power into Magnezone, which would be a very safe play? I think just going out in a Bulu for my Incineroar, keeping this Intimidate in case the Togemaru gets out of hand, I feel like it is the best play I can make. So I'll go for the Flash Cannon. And I'll swap in a Bulu. I'm very sure that this is Scarf Landers. Like, I am very confident. Just based on team composition, because Tapu Koko, again, very scary for my opponent's team. It played right. So, and it did switch out. So, that's why it's like confirming my suspicion for a choice Scarf. So, we'll go Tapu Bulu here. We will have Fake Up Pressure with the Incineroar and Intimidate. We're going to see the Iron Head come out into the Magna Zone. Okay, it's not Scarf. So, what's it going for? And it actually breaks my sub. Wow. That's quad resistant too. Earth power gonna come out. Target down the uh, magnet zone. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now I have two options. I can go my Lodic here, which is really tempting, or I could go Incineroar. I think my Lodic is the play. My opponent really can't touch my Milotic. Okay, so I'm wondering. I don't think it's Specs Landris. but we'll go for the icy wind. And just swap back in Incineroar. Get that Intimidate off into the Togemaru so it doesn't really do as much damage by my Lodic. Slow down the Lander so Top Bulu can outspeed it. Grassy Terrain is also going to end, so I do want to keep that Grassy Terrain just in case I need it for uh, recovery. So, Incineroar is always the play here. Let's see what my opponent counters with. If you read this, really good play. If not, I'm okay. Zing Zap going to come out. 30% chance to flinch too, which is not exactly the best. That still does a lot. Jeez, that actually did a lot. Earth Power into my Lodic. So it's just a double up into my Lodic, which doesn't proc Barry, but I flinch. Okay. Okay, why did that Totemaru do so much damage? 
That token Amara actually did a lot of damage. Grassy Terrain disappears. Our power doesn't look like a Chaos Milotic. I'm going to Icy Wind here, and I think I'm just going to fake out the token Amara. Even if token Amara spiky shields, I need the Landers to at least slow down. So my Bulu can outspeed it. And the Icy Wind damage, unless it's a Salt Vest Landers, I should put it in range of a Horn Leech. And Landers can only KO one. Actually, it can't even KO Milotic. It can only KO, KO Incineroar. And Totem Mar doesn't protect, actually. So we get the fake out. Our power gonna go out in Incineroar. Please hit both Icy Winds. Please hit both Icy Winds. Milotic, please hit both Icy Winds here. Okay, nice. Okay. So the Icy Wind gonna come out. Slow down the Totem Mar as well as the Landis variant. I can't tell if that's a Salt Vest. Although I should be able to win the game now at this point. I should be able to go Bulu here. I get super power to Togemar. I don't think that's worth it. I think I just always double up the lander slot with a Scald plus Horn Leech. Yeah. Because most landers just don't carry Protect. I don't know if this is like special. Th this is some kind of weird landers with a uh, special. That's like has Protect. I don't know. I'm just going to Scald Horn Leech I think. As a match is going to be forfeit, so it looks like my opponent doesn't think you can win against the Tapu Bulu, especially without your flinch chance, because my Milotic and Tapu Bulu does have to be Togemaru and Landis without the with the speed drop on both of those Pokemon. So Milotic able to come in the end game and do some work. Luckily, no Charizard from my opponent because I felt like Charizard was a lot more scarier than these combinations that my opponent had. Uh, the Sidewire was cool, being able to. Do the Sinister Arrow Raid. Spirit Shock was also a really cool move. It traps your opponent in, which is really nice. But it didn't really do too much damage, as you saw. It wasn't able to knock on my top of Bulu. The bulk on top of Bulu coming in clutch. But we'll play another game. And yeah, Magnezone doing some work. Um, so did the Milotic. So did top of Bulu. So did Incineroar. So yeah, able to do some work. As we'll see how the second game goes. But... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't feel Glalie did that. Well, actually, Glalie kind of did well. My opponent brought three ice weaknesses. They didn't bring the Rabombi. The Rabombi was what I was scared of. I thought my opponent was going to bring Rabombi, uh, set up Tailwind immediately, get maybe Blast Toys in, or Charizard, start clicking War Spot on Heat Wave, and it would have been really threatening. So I was really surprised not to see that Tailwind option. If I had known my opponent wasn't going to bring the Rabombi, I think Glalie would have done a ton of work then. Because uh, Glalie just outsped Landis, got a freeze dry off. I mean, if I got a bit of chip on the city, I freeze dry did a done did a what a KO'd. Um, freeze dry does a decent amount of blast twice too, weakening the power of War Spout. But I still gotta worry about Scald and Aura Spear and Water Pulse and all those other options. And Togemaru, yeah, Glalie was not being Togemaru. So yeah, Glalie could have done work there. It, I just didn't expect the Pokemon my opponent brought. But uh, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about that battle. It's still taking quite a while to find our s second game for today's episode. So we'll be right back with the second game of today's ep Oh, never mind. We got Zoo from Japan, 1491 rating. With the team of Metagross, Tyranitar, Tapu Fini, Tapu Lele, Landis variant, and Zapdos. It's always interesting to see double Tapu here, especially Lele plus Fini. It's always interesting. They both pair really well with Metagross. But let's see. I think Magnezone does a good amount of work here. Glalie, unfortunately, doesn't. It only hits three things super effectively, but doesn't really hit the other Pokemon. And I think the other Pokemon are coming. I think Glalie is a bigger threat to my team. Hmm. I want Landorus. Milotic, maybe? Maybe I go Landorus, Milotic. I feel like Landis Milotic covers a lot of things. Do I bring Magnezone? I don't know if I bring Magnezone. I think I against like Lele Metagross, I like Landis Farian, Milotic, Incineroar, and Top of Bulu. Those are the Pokemon I usually enjoy bringing. And I think it is the better call here. Yeah, so no Glalie in this episode, unfortunately. Well, we don't know that. Maybe we'll have a third game if this game is able to go by quick. But it's just really hard to bring the Glalie. As I said before, matchups are very specific for Glalie. As, yeah, it doesn't really enjoy Metagross. It doesn't enjoy Tyranitar. It doesn't enjoy Char... It doesn't enjoy a lot of Megas. Maybe if it's, there's a Salamence team, I can bring Glalie. Like, that would be crisp. Like, if we face a Salamence team. Because I don't think we face a Salamence team yet. Then again, you probably want to bring Salamence against my team. 
Unless it, you have like no Bulu answer because of the fact that I do have my Lodic. I have the Glalie. You assume I probably have special Landris, so you assume Hidden Power Ice. I don't know, maybe you don't bring the Salamence. Landris, my Lodic will lead against my opponents. Metagross and Zapdos, okay. I think the question is if it's Electrium on the Zapdos. I want momentum, I think. I don't know if you're going to go for Tailwind. I could see Protect Tailwind if you have it. I think I still want to U-turn out, though. U-turn to Landis and just go for the Icy Wind here. Just to gain a bit of speed. If you don't Mega Buff, I just U-turn out into Incineroar, I feel like. So I think that's an okay play for me. Yeah, so my opponent's going to Mega Buff. And I don't exactly want to trade my Landis yet because Landis is pretty useful in this matchup, I feel like. I'll go and send right here. Uh, I'm just worried about the Z move on the Zapdos, but not sure that KOs my Milotic without a double up. We'll find out. U turn does a good amount of damage to the Metagross. I think that's just 4 HP Metagross, so it should be a range of Earth Power. I can focus down the Zapdos then. Because a minus 1 Metagross is not doing too much to my team. I wonder if my opponent's going to read the Scarf, U turn, and go for the Stommy Tantrum into Incineroar. That would be a solid play. Like, that would be an absolutely solid play here. But we're just going to see the Ice Punch. So there's probably no Zen Headbutt on this Metagross. Uh, it's probably Stomping Tantrum and Iron Head, you would assume. We are going to see Tailwind come out from the Zapdos. No surprise there. As Icy Wind will come out into my opponent's side and slow down that Zapdos. And slowing down that Zapdos is pretty huge for me. Uh, it's just dealing with the Zapdos that's going to be difficult. I just have no idea what item it is, but I will just go for the fake on the Zapdos and Icy Wind here. I don't think there is a drawback to this play. Maybe the Lele comes in for the Zapdos, but I don't think that's too big. Anything is getting caught by the Icy Wind too, and my opponent's just going to stay in. So, just going to go for the Ice Punch. Ooh, you're reading my Landris switch, but I don't have a reason to really switch in the Landris when I have fake out and Icy Wind pressure. So, a uh, nice try by my opponent. I do respect that play. As we do get an icy wind off. And um, I forgot to plug in my computer. Okay, we got the damage on Zapdos, which is good. <sighs> hmm. Does my opponent go for that ice punch play again? I don't think you do. Here's the thing Sami Tantrum and the Thunderbolt might knock out Incineroar. How many turns of Tailwind are left? Two. Um, I kind of want to knock out the Zapdos. Go on the Landris now. Because I feel like you shouldn't Ice Punch my Milotic again. <sighs> I really don't think you should. Okay, Metagross is switching you out into the Tyranitar. So this works out beautifully for me. I will be able to get a knockoff into the Zapdos, get rid of an item. If you're going for the Gigabolt Havoc into the Milotic now, I feel pretty good. And once Tailwind is over, I feel very good about my position. So... Get Landers in, get Intimidate off into the Tyranitar. So it's going to be Tyranitar, and they can't Mega Evolve. We know that, if it is Mega or not. We're going to see the Roost come out. Very nice play. Okay. Which isn't too bad for me. As I do get a knockoff into the Zapdos slot. Psychic Seed. Okay, so it wasn't a Z move set. I wonder if you Thunderbolt... Rock slide here. Oh no, I do have that Stone Edge pressure against my opponent. I feel like Bulu is a very safe play, although my opponent can go for Heat Wave trying to get damage to the uh, Landris. Hmm. I assume Lele is the last Pokemon in the back. What I assume Lele? Could be Landris, but I feel like Lele makes sense. I kind of want to go Bulu here. And you turn out the Zapdos. The reason I want to make this play is Bulu does threaten the Tyranitar, which is pretty good. And by you turning out, I get another Intimidate into this Tyranitar. So it's going to be at, what, minus two? And I have Fake Out Pressure for the Zapdos the following turn, which I think is really good. Uh, Zapdos stays in. I don't know if Stone Edge would have KO'd the Zapdos either. It might have been close. So... You turn out the Zapdos. We will go out into my Incineroar here. I could go my Lodic, but I don't think it's worth. I wonder if Hornleach will finish off the Zapdos. I could fake out Bulk up the next turn. I think that would be a really solid play for me. 
depending on if the Zapdos goes for Heat Wave or not. Because if it goes for Thunderbolt, I should be healthy enough. If it's a uh, Heat Wave, yeah, that's not exactly that good. Rock's not going to come out. Yep. Damage? Not really. Just a Thunderbolt into the blue slot. Okay, perfect. And I should be able to get a bulk up now. Do I want to Flare Blitz Superpower to Tyranitar? That's also another play I could have. The reason I can make this play is because of the fact that I could catch the Metagross on the switch in potentially. I do want to prevent Zapdos from getting our Tailwind, and I could potentially knock it out in the future turn, so I think going for the Fake Out is the best play. I could go for the Horn Leech here into Zapdos too, but I don't think that's worth it here. Uh, we'll see what my opponent decides to opt for. Will it be the... I think Tyranitar does switch out, so I'm minus two. It doesn't really do much. Or my opponent can DC. <laughs> so I think we're getting a third game in today's episode. I feel like I had a lot of control over that match, but it's hard to say. Because I feel like my position was really solid. I feel like my position was really solid. Uh, when it came down to maybe a bit of RNG, if the Metagross did come in, if my opponent crits or flinches or anything. Because I think um, if Metagross comes in, I just hard switch to Landers and with my Incineroar and go for a Horn Leech knock out the Zapdos. Uh, if Iron Head comes out, it I don't think it knocks out my Bulu with the minus one onto the Metagross as well as the bulk up. So yeah, it would have been tough. My opponent, I guess, could go Lele, but I don't know if he would go Lele in that situation. It just doesn't seem to do that much work because that just allows my Incineroar to probably just get a Flare Blitz off. So yeah, not exactly sure. But I think we're going to just search for the third game of today's episode. Alright, we got our last opponent from Spain, 1560 rating. As our last opponent, we got Cresselia Gengar, Incineroar, Tapu Bulu, Landis Varian, and Tapu Fini. Really interesting combination because you got the standard Gengar core, Gengar, Incineroar, Tapu Bulu. Then you got Landis, Tapu Fini, and then you got Cresselia. So... Not exactly sure what I'm expecting. Could we call Mike Roselli on this team? That's definitely something that I could see. Uh, what do I want to go here? Magma Zone can do a lot of work. Uh, depending on... Well, there is the Incineroar and Landers. But I think Magma Zone does really well against everything else. Um, I could realistically bring Glalie. The Super Fang could be useful. Uh, the Gengar is going to be hard to play against. I don't think I bring Bulu. Maybe I don't bring Magnezone. I think I want to bring Glalie. Just attempt to bring Glalie. Super Fang, just wearing down my opponent could be actually really useful in the game. Uh, the problem is I'm not bringing much for a Tapu Fini. Do I expect Tapu Fini in this matchup? I mean, maybe not. I think you're going to bring Gengar. I think you have to bring Bulu. Your Milotic weakness is pretty big. I think it's Landers and Incineroar coming. If it is special Landers. If it's physical Landers, I don't think it is. Uh, we'll go Gengar. I mean, Milotic plus Landers here. With Glalie and Incineroar. Let's see how this is going to go. That's what I'm pretty sure how it's going to work. Then again, if you are bringing Tapu Fini, I do have Freeze Draw on the Glalie. And I do have Super Fang. So I do have a few potential options for that Tapu Fini. So we'll see how this works. Let us see what my opponent decides to bring. It will be the Cresselian Gengar. Okay. Really wonder if this is a calm mindset. I mean, I think you just protect Gengar and do something with your Cresselia. Calm mind, probably. Um, do I have a good U-turn switching? I mean, do I have a good Pokemon? Well, I have Incineroar I could just U-turn out into. Yeah. Uh, I see when really doesn't cover anything. I might as well just go for a Scald Burn into Cresselia and U-turn out. It could be like ally switch Cresselia. I feel you should definitely respect a Scarf Landers here. Since it is pretty common with the Milotic Tapu Bulu core. So I'd expect the Gengar to protect as Cresselia is actually going to retreat. Incineroar? No, Bulu. Okay. So I see when could have been useful for, I guess, the Bulu. But I'm bringing out my Incineroar anyway. So not a big deal. As I'm guessing Gengar does protect yeah, so I think my opponent's just trying to get rid of uh, my Lodic right away. I feel like this is a very aggressive play into my Lodic. Uh, if I get a Scald Burn, like, I'm really set here. Icy Wind might have been better. As, yeah, we're going to see the Protect. Icy Wind might have been better because it allows maybe my Incineroar to outspeed the top of blue, depending on if it's a Scarf or not. So we will get a U-Turn off into the top of blue slot. And we'll go out into my Incineroar. 
And then I guess we'll Flare Blitz the uh, Tabu Bulu. I guess I could also go back into Landis. I wish I, this is one of the instances where I wish I had Sludge Bomb. Although Stone Edge has been pretty helpful. So, uh, yeah, can't complain too much as we'll see what my opponent decides to do. We will get Scald off. If we get a burn, we're in a fantastic shape right here. As damage? No burn. Okay. So if it's Scarbulu, I just want to protect Flare Blitz. Um, yeah. Sludge Bomb and Superpower might knock out Incineroar, but it depends. Because I don't know if you go for that play. I could also just fake out Icy Wind, which might be better here. But the problem is with that play is if my opponent does just... The problem with fake out Icy Wind is it's a bit too obvious. So I think I'm just going to Flare List the top of Bulu and protect my Lodic. Because I don't want the Wood Hammer going on to my Lodic here. So we'll see. Because I feel like if I do that play, like it's the same situation the next turn. Because I don't outspeed anything if it is a Scarf Bulu. Uh, we're going to see the Z-Move come out. Oh, it's all up pummeling. Okay. It's all up pummeling. Hmm. So, Bulu is all up homeling. That changes things. It knocks out my Incineroar, and you don't get a stat decrease. <sighs> that's that's really bad, too, because Incineroar was a really good answer to my opponent. Oh, well. Since... Hmm. I guess I should have just went fake out Icy Wind. Is the Bulu in freeze-dry range? I don't know. It depends on the bulk on that Bulu. I feel like going Landers might be fine here. I think going Landers is a play. Because I do have that Intimidate onto the Bulu as well as the Gengar, but the question is the following turn. Okay, so I could see Bulu's heart switching out into Cresselia right here. I don't have a Cresselia answer. Was not expecting the all-out palm lane. I guess I could Icy Wind and Earth Power, but if my opponent, my opponent should probably switch out to Gengar here. I mean, not switch out, protect Gengar, and I think Bulu switches out too. I think Bulu should be preserved. Or Gengar just protects, it's just, just a scout. I guess if you trap me in with me going for Sludge Bomb, that's fine. But I feel like I could have just Earth Powered the Gengar. Huh. Priscilla was a safe play, but all right. Um. Yeah, unfortunately, my opponent's gonna get a double down onto my uh, lander slot after. Again, this is looking pretty bad. Uh, icy wind. I have to U-turn. Like I have no other option. Maybe I gotta hope that my Lodic lives the wood hammer. We will go for the U-turn into the top of blue slot. And Glalie here. Maybe I should have air powered. Shadow Ball gonna come out, target down my lander slot. Is this a double down into that slot as well? Gets a special defense drop, not really mattering too much. Wood hammer gonna come out. That shouldn't knock out my Lodic at this range. Yeah, okay, perfect. And it takes all that chip. So Icy Wind should be able to knock out the top of Bulu. And we do get a berry. And we did get the speed reduce onto the Gengar. So I guess not the end of the world. As Icy Wind will come out, it does connect with both Pokemon. Uh, but beating the, my, beating the Cresselia is going to be really difficult. Being the Cresselia is going to be really difficult. I do have Super Fang, but... Yeah, that's not exactly a reliable check. Cresselia probably comes out now since I can't KO it. Man, some Moody on Glalie would be great here. Let's see. Should be the Cresselia. Yep. Don't know if we double into my Lodic. I feel like you might attack the Glalie this turn. I feel like you protect Gengar. But my opponent... Hmm. Should I sub here? Um, I might as well Mega Well. There's no difference. Uh, Mega Well protect and just try to get the chip damage onto Gengar. And then maybe next turn. It really depends on what this uh, Gengar does. Maybe I Super Fang Scald the Cresselia the next turn? I don't know. It really comes down to what kind of Cresselia this is. I feel like it should be Calm Mind, but I don't know if it is. 
A Gengar going to protect here. Just a safe, obvious protect. No surprise. Scald into the Gengar slot. And Trick Room. I could have subbed here. Okay, if it's not called Mine Cresselia, I feel okay about my spot. Especially if I'm able... If Incineroar is the last Pokemon from my opponent's side. Grass disappears from the battlefield. I feel like that's more useful for me. Yeah, so I'll go for the Scald. And I think I'll go for a Freeze Dry, too. Into the Gengar slot. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Maybe my opponent was afraid of like the Return slash Frustration. Sunny Day. Wow. You don't really see that as much anymore. Wow, okay. So Scald going to come out into the Gengar. I mean, this is still a game, depending on if it is Incineroar in the back. But Shadow Ball going to come out, finish out my Glalie. I <sighs> should have subbed. should have subbed that one turn. Or Super Fang the Crest, at least. Now I bring out my Scarf Landers. Does my opponent know I'm Scarf? Technically, no. But then again, the Gengars are minus one speed. So you should outspeed my uh, Landers. At least that's what my opponent should think. Man, okay. Um, I also don't know if this Crystal is Icy Wind or Trick Room. We'll Scald here. We'll go for an Earth Power. I mean, even if I target on the Cresselia, it's basically worthless. Uh, maybe I should just go for the Recover of Milotic in case Gengar decides to make a Protect play. Yeah, it, there doesn't really seem to be much I can do here. Like, damage-wise, I can't break down the Gengar. And, yeah, Gengar's going to protect. Okay, so at least I get one thing off, right? And that's to recover. But, I see win. That activates my competitive boost. This is the only move that the Cresselia can target down. Okay, I'll take that. Because I get a recover off. My Landris is slow now. My Landris is slow. My opponent doesn't know that, though. Does my opponent know I'm Scarf or not? That's the question. Oh, wait, didn't... No, I you turned the, out the Gengar before. Never mind. My opponent knows I'm Scarf. Never mind. Yeah. Surprised it wasn't an Icy Wind Shadow Ball there, but that still works out for me. I get a Scald off. It's plus two at least now. I think it does... I think it still does more than uh, Earth Power. I'll just Scald the Gengar. And Earth Power. Again... Oh, come on. It's Ally Switch. Why on this team? You don't need it. Well, I guess you could catch, like, Tectonic Rages and stuff. But still, I don't think you need it. Get a burn on the Cresselia. Uh, so at least I'll be wearing it down time from time. Shadow Ball going to come out finish off my uh, Landers. And then it really comes down to that back Pokemon. Um, How many turns of Trick Room and Sun are left? This is the last turn of Trick Room. Two turns of Sun. It's really going to come down to, I think, Sludgemon Poisonings. Unless the Cresselia is helping hand, too. And my opponent just going to keep clicking Ally Switch. I guess you don't have a reason not to click Ally Switch, I guess, because you can't go for Icy Wind. Trick Room and Sunny Day are worthless. Oh, wow, we found out this Cresselia's entire moveset. Sludgemon going to come out. Okay, no poison. Twisted Dimensions return to normal. I protect here. I mean, this is still a winnable game, so I'll still play it out. But it's kind of... Yeah, I should have thought about that more. I should have thought about the um, ally switch. Protect. My opponent is going to keep clicking ally switch. And then I think it's a 50-50 the next turn. We're going to see the Gengar Sludge Bomb. No surprise there. Um, I feel like you should protect Sunny Day. I feel like that covers a lot of my options. So... I know, I feel like that does cover a lot of my options. I'm going to recover here. I feel like you should go for um, Protect Sunny Day so your Gengar can survive a Scald. But I guess my opponent's in the upper advantage, so you don't have to do that. I'm uh, just going to go for the Sludge Bomb, okay. Doesn't get the poison. Sunny Day going to come out. So I'm just going to go for the Sludge. Oh, wait, is my mind looks slower than Cresselia? Okay, yeah. That works too, I guess. Uh, I don't think I can break through this. I feel like the big mistake was going for the Skull and the Cresselia and not realizing the Ally Switch was a play the second time I used Ally Switch. 
We'll go for Icy Wind here. I think I gotta hope for like two low rolls, but uh, the Sludge Bomb looks like it's been doing about 80 every time. So Cresselia gonna retreat. Is that Incineroar? Wait. If I knock out here, do I have a chance? Unless Gengar protects, but even if it protects, that's fine. Competitive boost. So it was Incineroar and Taunt. Okay. I didn't recover here, fortunately, but uh, that's still pretty bad for me. Because I can't protect. You're going to get fake out Sludge Bomb. Okay. Yeah, that's game. Yeah, and I don't even do that much to Gengar. Plus, uh, 4 Icy Wind doesn't do much to Gengar. And I can't do much damage-wise. I mean, I could probably get a Scald off Incineroar. I won't knock out. Fake out Sludge Bomb supply. I, yeah, there's no out. So... Hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2018 Backdoor Battles. Uh, this game, it was like... I think it was just a Gengar Trap. It was really f difficult to handle. I feel like the one turn that I did mess up, though, that could have actually been huge, though, was going for the Substitute with Glalie. Because if I went for the Substitute with Glalie, I just got an extra attack in the Gengar, and that could have been absolutely huge. Also, another key turn of that game that I realized I did wrong was... The second ally switch. My opponent really didn't have a reason not to click ally switch there. If I called that ally switch, it could have been absolutely a different game. Because I feel like Gengar might have actually been in range of another Scald, for instance. Since I was boosted at that point. I don't know. I think it comes down to is Scald at 2 KO with plus 2, even in the sun. Which I don't feel like it does, but maybe it can could have gave me some momentum. But yeah, hope that you enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2018 Back to Battles. If you did like it, please leave a like down below. Show some support. As well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description, such as my social media, the sizes of my channel. All that will be linked down below, as well as the team if you want to try it out. Fortunately, Glady not coming in as Drew, but it could have actually done work if I um, did make the play of Substitute. I did not expect the Trick Room there. did not expect the Ally Switch. I don't know. Or the Sunny Day. Those were like definitely some big techs that were... Uh, I was not expecting on this team. But otherwise, feel free to leave a comment down below. I do read them. Otherwise, have a great day, people. And until we battle again, I'll catch y'all later.